Cool. Um, I think we are recording. Are we recording? It's blooming. Hey, is this thing on? What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Are We Recording? This is uh, episode 13 of season two. And uh, no guests today. It's just uh, the young Rottweiler, Ethan Hamilton. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, Hold on, uh, we got to do your other nicknames. You know what? I- I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I'm in a good mood today. E. I'll give you the other nicknames, man. We got uh, the. <laughs> is it the five? How high, or I guess how tall do you want me to put you on your five foot um, five of pure temptation? Yeah, Mr. I think that's five, what it was last time. Yeah, yeah Mr. Five foot five of pure temptation. We're, we're not putting another inch on that. I mean, I feel like the other inch went somewhere else. My fault, my fault. Okay. This, this... <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother. All right, so what what other nicknames would you like me to, I guess, introduce you as now? Because the, the I feel like you've added more. The podfather? The podfather. Um, double back. Okay. <laughs> double back? All right. Double, double and, back yeah, and podfather. Yeah. Add those to the list. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, we've got the Matrix. We've got Five Foot Five of Pure Temptation, the Young Rottweiler. Um, man, I feel like I'm missing one. The Blonde Bomber. The Blonde. Oh my God! Why you always got me? I hate that damn nickname. <laughs> hey, you wanted all the nicknames, man. And uh, man, I forgot we were still doing the intro. Uh, I'm Double O Seven <laughs> Gabe Sutton. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, this is just gonna be. Just us catching up. We haven't done an episode with just us two in a minute. So, um, yeah, I feel like we should just kick it. Uh, I have a topic to start the episode off with. And uh, I feel like this could lead to other conversation points. But uh, Andrew Tate has been huge. How did I know? How did I know? Bro, I, I was thinking in my head, I knew he was going to talk about this. I knew he was going to talk about this. How did I know? Well, I mean, it's what everyone's talking about right now. Um, <laughs> for whatever reason, or I mean, we know the reasons why. Andrew Tate, if you haven't seen his content, is... Uh, how would you describe him, Ethan? Because I feel like Andrew Tate is... He's, he's like he... the opposite of a feminist. Like, if you were a meninist. <laughs> no, I, I think the best way to describe him is that, like... He like the way I think of it is like he's in the commentary community, but I feel like he is like the commentary community created him, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. All these life coaches, like fresh and fit, like all these type of guys, like these commentary, really big, like popular commentary, like podcaster or content creators, they made Andrew Tate. Like Andrew Tate is like the love child of all of them. And like it, my whole thing is like if you hate Andrew Tate like what does that say about like the life coach like in commentary community if you hate him you know what i'm saying like i see him as like just the extreme of the extreme when it comes to stuff like that yeah obviously uh if you haven't seen andrew tate has been catching a lot of flack from uh female audiences who are not cool with his sexist comments and i agree not just female audience like he he is just like i at first i feel like everybody like not with us. I don't want to put that on everybody. Yeah. With me, at least. At first, I was like, you know what, Andrew Tate? This shit is hilarious. Like, this is really funny. And then I got to the point, I was like, you know what? This is really damaging. I'm not saying I'm one of the Andrew Tate fanboys. Because believe me, I'm not. But it's like, at first, I was like, you know what? I could separate like what's funny from what's disrespectful and what's like just wild to say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now I'm at to the point, it's like, you know what? I've had my fun with Andrew Tate. What, what, what Andy said about his toys, I'm done playing with you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm done. I, I feel that. I mean, I, I didn't really know about Andrew Tate until he started getting on my TikTok page. Um, yeah, I'm not really a fan of the guy. I can't really say I am. Um, from what I've seen, it seems like he says he has a relatively good message about, you know, a man caring about himself, but... I don't know. Some of the stuff that I've seen besides that is just very like clickbaity, kind of just like disrespectful. Like, yeah. I don't know, just a I little out of pocket. I think that's the right word for me. I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm all for the out of pocket and I'm all for the 
like the clickbaity stuff because at the end of the day like doing stuff like this you have to be entertaining you have to be entertaining yeah yeah and not saying that all clickbaity stuff is good because it's not but it's like i understand it if that makes sense but i feel like some of the stuff it's like it's hard to tell with with guys like him like what's tr- what's him being like over exaggerated and what's the truth you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, and I've and I've never. I one thing I do have to applaud him for. I've never seen somebody take over an app the way Andrew Tate has done the past month. Like that's that's wild yeah. how fast he did it. Like, like next thing I knew, my whole for you page was like Andrew Tate stuff, and I'm like, dog, what happened? What happened to my for you page? I had the algorithm perfect. Like yeah. I had it perfect. I was getting my podcast. Uh, clips. I was getting my my new TikTok dances. I had everything lined up. I had everything lined up, and then Andrew Tate just came and ruined my algorithm. <laughs> so let me ask you: Do you think this is gonna cause like a chain reaction with other content creators, and like what people are gonna, I guess, title as toxic masculinity? And how do we define toxic masculinity? Is it what Andrew Tate's preaching? I wouldn't say so. I think like toxic masculinity. It's like our episode with Haley, how we talked about. I don't feel like that word or that phrase is used correctly. Like, mm. I feel like it's just being a dick. Like he's just an asshole. <laughs> and I, 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 sometimes that shit is funny. Like sometimes it's really really funny. But we don't have to come up with these new terms for shit. Like for just being a dick. Like we don't have to do that. Like it's, you know what I'm saying. Like why? Yeah. Just, let's call it what it is. Let's keep it a buck. Like. And do I think it's, it starts a trend? No, because I don't think he's the start of this trend. Like, this trend has been going on for a minute. Like, and it's not just him. Like, you saw that one clip of that one. Uh, it was right after the uh, Roe v. Wade, like, overturned thing. And it was that one clip of that one uh, chick saying that uh, this is the, that, uh, what was it? Like, I'm probably misrepresenting it, but I don't give a fuck. This is, this is our recording. That's all we do. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's it's, it's, the cl- it's the clip of uh, her saying that uh, uh, abortion is worse or uh, going against abortion is worse than slavery oh yeah I think you showed me that <laughs> that clip is wild and like I, that's why I'm saying like Andrew Tate isn't like the, the the start of this whole like movement of like just life coaches giving terrible advice you know what I'm saying? Because don't get me wrong, some of the stuff he says, same thing with everybody, is cool and it's good and I can do the message. But other stuff, it's like, dog, I'm all for the jokes. But sometimes it's like, oh, you make it hard for me to laugh. <laughs> yeah, and we're drawing the line between, oh, shit, like, that's, you know, <laughs> like, that's funny and that's like, bro, you can't say that. <laughs> well, it's like, it's the line of like, are you trying? are you entertaining are you being over exaggerating or are you like is this who you really are you know what i'm saying i mean he puts off the persona that that's like who he really is and these are all like truly what he believes and that's i think like what makes it hard for me to like get on board with what he's doing because i mean (laughs) again if you've seen the clips you know what we're talking about he's just not he's He's, not he's not he's not for everybody yeah i think yeah I think it's coming towards like it's a downward hill. You know what I mean? Like I feel like two, three weeks ago, you had all of his incels <laughs> in the comments oh, of everybody's man. videos making stan accounts of him. And it's it was funny for probably a week. Like it was funny for a week, two weeks. But with everything in the internet, it gets played out really, really fast. Like it gets boring really, really fast. And I think that's what's happening with Andrew Tate. You know what I mean? Like think about it, like two, three months ago, everybody was mad at Fresh and Fit because of the nasty stuff they was doing. You know what I mean? Like, t- talking wild, disrespectful to women on the podcast. Like, th- like you know what I mean? Like, stuff like yeah. that. It's cornball shit. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, well, we don't have to worry about that here. Our recording, we're feminist, by the way. So Yeah, yeah. If you look at our past episode, we had four. What do we have? We have four women on the same episode. All right. Uh, back to back no, to back to back. Same episode. We had a Not bunch that. of women on the uh, blind dating episode which by the way you should go check that out that's evergreen you can watch Max. it basically whenever um like that little plug right there yeah i know we're getting better at this speaking yeah, no. about plugs now i'm just fine <laughs> speaking about plugs uh i'm trying to go somewhere with a segue and i don't know where to go oh i i have one okay you're talking speaking about plugs about pl- right 
Speaking about plugs. Speaking of plugs, um, I had to get a creatine plug uh, because that stuff is just gone. Like, just doesn't exist apparently anymore. Uh, are you becoming a gym head now? I think I might be. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I've been going like every day of the week for the past couple of weeks and I can feel myself like beginning to really make it a part of my everyday routine. And I, I, I don't know you've been putting in work in the gym too, man. How are you, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. But it's, it's weird. Like guys only ever talk about like going to the gym when they've gone through like a breakup. Like, I, and it's funny because me and you, like, I have not gone through a breakup. And yet me and you are at the gym every single day. Like, I feel like we're, like, the outsiders. But why do you think, like, guys only go to the gym after a breakup? That's a really good point. Man, we had this conversation, and I feel like we'll see things a little bit differently. But for me personally, like, I think personal growth is just, like, the most important thing you can do after a breakup. Because, like, you were so caught up in your time with that other person that there was a lot of opportunities for you to improve yourself that you really didn't. So it's like, okay, you got to kind of move on and just find something that's healthy. And when you work out, you get serotonin. There's a lot of benefits to it. So I'm just like, I think it's it's the best course of action, (laughs) honestly. I feel like that was the responsible answer. And now I'm going to go for my silly answer. How I think of it, like, drugs. psychologically. Hard drugs. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see it, it a bit differently. Like, the way I see it is that, like, whenever you go to a breakup, right, your, your first thing is that, like, your immediate response is, like, well, I have to prove that I'm better off yeah. by myself than with that person. And it's different because with, with the girls, they have their own way of going through it. Cause I, in, in some ways, I, I, I think of it a lot as dealing with trauma. Like your response after a breakup is how you deal with trauma. And so I think the reason why guys go to the gym or immediately go straight to go get money is because I feel like a lot of men, especially men our age, like late teens, like early twenties, like we just don't have enough like emotional vulnerability to just like just sit in our pain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so we just deflect. We're like, let's go get money. Let's go, let's go party. Let's go like, let's go to the gym. When in reality, we just need to like sit at home and listen to Frank Ocean for a week. Yeah. Oh, dude. And, okay. So I don't think there's a wrong way to handle a breakup. And like you're saying, perfectly I think there right is. now. I think there is. Okay. Okay. Actually. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> there are definitely bad ways to handle breakups, but in your case, it's not a bad way because like, obviously like the gym is going to be your best option physically and it does help you mentally. But I I would say like your mental health is just as important. And if like getting to the gym doesn't fit in with your schedule at a time, that's completely fine. But I think from just a general standpoint, you gotta, you gotta get everyone to start working out, man. It's uh, yeah. But I feel like, how does it like, don't get me wrong. It benefits you some cases, like from a health perspective, but like reality, like, you're not getting over that trauma by going through the gym. Like you're really not, like you're not dealing with what happened in that relationship. You're not dealing with like how it came that way. You're just deflecting. Like I let's mean, keep it but, a buck. Like, you're but not if you're doing that stuff like outside of the gym, you're still taking care of it, right? I'm just saying but like- not, why... But you're not, let's, let's keep it a... I, I don't know, I, I don't think we are. I don't think we, we like, I think when men and even because even though I'm speaking like specifically towards men handling stuff like this, like I I feel like women do it in their own ways. But like I can I can't speak for them. I can only speak for us and myself. Like I don't feel like that's a good way like to actually deal with the trauma of a relationship is to go to the gym because if you really want to go to the gym, just go to the gym. Like it shouldn't be dependent on you getting out of a relationship to feel better about yourself by going to the gym. See, okay, now that's kind of where I agree with you is like, I'm not opposed to the idea of a breakup spurring you to go to the gym. But like, like you just said, the gym should already be like, on your mind before the breakup. Or, you know, while you're in a relationship too, because I feel like you've got to keep improving yourself. Even while you're in a relationship. And also, it, it depends on like, the way a relationship ends too. like, if you were insecure about your physical self with your significant other 
then it's going to cause that same problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, I guess. But I feel like sometimes that's like, again, I'm talking about like our immediate responses. Like whenever, you know, you get rejected talking to a girl, the first thing you think of sometimes is like, oh, maybe I was, I wasn't tall enough. I was unhandsome enough. I, I had acne. I had this, I had that, you know what I'm saying? Like mm. maybe my arms were small. Maybe I'm like chest is like, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm fat or, you know what I'm saying? Like, and instead of like, cause I think that's, that's narcissism too, is that you think, you think that that person is like so surface level that the reason why they didn't like you is a surface level thing. And sometimes it might be, but like in a breakup, I don't think that usually happens. Like how many breakups have you heard of or how many, you know what I mean? Stuff like that where the, the, the person doing the breaking up was like, yeah, I, I just, they just turned, they started becoming ugly to me. Like they started getting ugly. They started getting fat. That doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? That doesn't happen unless it's with really vain people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's fair. And, okay, the thing is, I will say, like, I, I'll go a little personal with it. When I first broke up with my girl, or I guess when me and my girlfriend broke up my freshman year at Texas State, um, I handled it exactly like you said. My first response was like, okay, I got to go to the gym right away. And honestly, that worked for like two weeks. <laughs> and even That's then I stopped. Like... And then I didn't go for a long time after that. So I see where you're coming from, but... Because you're not dealing with the actual trauma of what happened in that relationship. Yeah. You're just like, how can I feel better? What's the get rich quick scheme of like feeling better about myself? Let me go to the gym for for two weeks, get a bunch of the serotonin. Because what happens after those two weeks when you're like, damn, the gym ain't that fun anymore. Then the serotonin is harder to get from the gym. And then you're like, damn, you got to sit with yourself. Well, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So see, I think that's where the mindset thing comes into it because like the way that you should see work and I think this is like what's motivated me for working out now is I just like seeing myself improve. Like I take progress pictures and, you know, weigh myself every day now. And I'm like, I like seeing the improvement. I like challenging myself and like, okay, I can get, you know, in better shape now. Um, so I think it's just like the mindset of like after you break up too, because like you could do that we've seen a lot of guys get out of relationships and then get fucking yoked and that's because they actually took it seriously and it was just like i'm not gonna yeah. do it just to get over the relationship i'm gonna do it because it improves like me as a whole person too but you know what i mean how, yeah but but just because you get yoked does not mean you feel better about yourself <laughs> after a relationship like because I mean, a, lo a lot of people like they can get yoked after a breakup or get back into shape but they're just hiding all that fear and insecurity. They're putting their value. Because what you're doing now is you're putting the value of who you are and what you offer into the muscles. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, mm. you yourself can't see past that. Because you're like, well, now that I'm jacked, she got no choice but to stay with me. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, you just didn't deal with it. You just, it's, it's like an addiction. You found a new addiction to, to distract you from what you're actually feeling. When in reality, instead of like, of course, we should all be in the gym. We should all be healthy. The reality is we should stop trying to go get money or go get fit right after a breakup. We should try, try to go take care of our chicken. Like, dog, sit with your pain, dog. Like, grieve. Like, when you get out of a relationship, you should grieve the same way you grieve, like, when a death happens. You know what I'm saying? Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I feel like some people can do that exclusively. Like, all can do all of those things at the same time you know, go to the gym, take care of themselves mentally, um, you know, and there are people who can't. And like you're saying, it's okay to like, just put the gym thing aside and just be like, let's just focus on, you know, getting out of this funk and then we'll figure everything else out along the way. But yeah, that's kind of my rant about, I guess that kind of leads to my rant about how the gym is <laughs> really changing my life basically. No. No, 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 I'm, bro, I'm happy for you, bro. I can speak for yourself, my, myself too, like, dog. I, I like going back to the gym. It makes it's this is like the first. And you time like in seeing my the progress, I just... and I, I told you too, like, I'm seeing progress. You, you're gaining, you're putting on weight, and that's what you wanted to do, right? Like that just yeah. gonna make you feel pretty good about yourself. A little bit, but it's mostly just like I like the routine of it. Now being back home, I need to get in a routine of doing stuff. That's that's the best way I mm. operate. You know what I'm saying? And the gym is easy 
easiest way to find structure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and on, while we're on the topic of breakups, because like because or using the gym as like a substitute for grieving in the breakups, I think it's it's good that we started talking about this because man, it's it's getting to the end of summer, so all them summer flings <laughs> that 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 we had in, in, in May and April. They, they, they don't look the same in August and September. You know what I'm saying? And a, and a lot of people, man, just it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a rough winter. It's gonna be a rough winter. Are, are you um, are you trying to? <laughs> no, 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 I'm like not team zero. Rude to somebody? No, 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 We've all, had, we've all had summer flings, you know what I'm saying? Like we've all had summer flings that didn't make it to Christmas time. We've had Christmas flings that ain't make it to summertime because it, it's weird. Like when the weather gets like a certain way, like I, they gotta do a study to that. Like, just, cause walk with me. Like, is it me or like I feel like with certain weather, like you just you just feel it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the blood is pumping, and you're like, damn, who am I finna talk to? Like, I need to share this. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I definitely agree. I mean, there's there's a reason reason it's called a summer fling. I mean, you're a hundred percent right. So yeah, man, like the weather's hot. There's less clothes involved in activities. Like I don't know. The same, yeah, I, the, the same with winter. Think about it. Like in the winter, it gets cold. Everybody starts getting inside. They want to bundle up. They want to get warm. What's the best way to get warm? Not put clothes on. But put somebody else's clothes on, you know what I'm saying? Oh shit! <laughs> that's that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm excited to see, man. All these new couples in September and October. I'm looking. I'm looking to see if y'all make it to Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's the real test. Hey, that we really gonna see is. if y'all make it to Thanksgiving and Christmas. When when it's time to see if uh if that Christmas gift check hits as good as it's supposed to hit. Hey, and then you get to those. You get to those other months in uh, February. That's when uh, when coming uh, off before Valentine's Day, or you yeah, wait yeah, till yeah, the summer. You go, you go through stages because <laughs> we, we be like classifying too too much things as dating. Just because y'all been together too much, don't mean y'all in a relationship. I think of that is the honeymoon phase. Like, like if you've been dating since like right, say Gage, me and you start dating, right? Okay, it's June. hold on. Can we? Uh, what? What? <laughs> We know so many girls. You could have like no, no, no. Let's do me and you, right? Me and you are dating, right? Me and you met at a pool party. I was like, damn, Gage looked good with his shirt off, and you're like, yeah, come over here and get some. Like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> let's you say, sick, let, let, let's just say that me and you are dating, right? Me and you have an amazing summer. Me and you do some wild stuff. I mean, some nasty stuff. <laughs> Can you get to the point? <laughs> <laughs> but now, now, now it's this. School's coming back off. Now you got to start showing me off to your friends. That's the first thing. Do you want me to? Do you want to start showing me off to your friends? If you can make it through that, then comes then comes Halloween, right? Then then it's commitment. Are we gonna get matching costumes? Thanksgiving. Am I gonna meet the family? Christmas. What gifts we getting? How much money we putting up? Like, there's waves to this relationship thing, man. Hmm. Think about it, man. It's, it's little checkpoints. It's little checkpoints you, that you, you got to pass. And, and Valentine's Day, you can make it through your first Valentine's Day going through that. That's like graduation day. Like, you did it. Like, that that that's it. You, you can get through Valentine's Day. You're good for at least another year, you know, before you before she finds out who you really are and, 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 and all that stuff. <laughs> okay, so let me let me ask you, man. Do you think... There's a true, no, just one person for you out there. And oh, we getting deep today, man. Yeah. Oh, this is what happens when you leave us, leave us two alone. Uh no. If I'm <laughs> if I'm being honest, man, this this is eight billion people in this world. That's crazy. This is it's bound to be more than one person for, that, that you're compatible with. Yeah, I, I kind of think the same thing, but I feel like you could also have like really special connections with certain people, and you're always gonna feel closer to certain people. Like, you know yeah, what I, I mean? Yeah, I feel you. I need to find me one of them people soon, man. It's yeah. Like I said, it, it, winter time's coming up. I mean, I'm not saying I'm buying gifts, but I'm, I'm gonna find me something. Hey, man. Right now, I don't know about you, but I struggle with gifts. Like I used to think I was a really good gift giver, but like now, ever since last 
year, like I was, I was rocked, man. I was rocked. Man, I I don't know. I feel like, I feel like gift giving is pretty easy. The people I hate shopping for are my parents, man. My parents are so hard to shop. Well, not my mom. My mom will send me a list of like for Christmas and for her birthday. She'll be like, "This is what I want." There you go. Thanks, mom. Appreciate mm, that's it. How, I that's how that. it should be. <laughs> when you're shopping for friends and you sh you're shopping for partners, like that stuff get, gets pretty hectic. Yeah. But we we, right. we all got time for that, man. We how many months we got left? We got four months to figure that shit out. So yeah, that's future. Is, uh... That's future. That's future. Gage and Ethan problems. As we yeah, as we record this on uh, Tuesday, August sixteenth, Ethan Hamilton and Gage Sutton are both single. Whoa, and, whoa, uh... whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on, did, don't did put I that jump out the there. gun. You, you don't know who's listening. You don't know who's listening. All right, you're right. <laughs> you're trying to be a fan. <laughs> Man, I can't believe summer's already over with, man. This was a really good summer. Like, a really Honestly, good summer. I'm going to look back at the summer as, like, one of the most fun ones, bro, because I feel like so much happened. Like, obviously, it I It was graduated. so short. It was so <laughs> fucking short. It felt really short, right? But, like, I feel like we got so many fun nights out with all of the guys. And, um, man, there's so no, much, we, like. Well, we packed. <laughs> we packed. We packed the like, we packed it in in July. Like, I was thinking July, about Fourth of July, bro. When we did the the Fourth of July, we went July. to we went to the lake. I we I got one of the meanest sunburns I've ever had, <laughs> and I'm darkest. I, I'm a, even though I'm a, I'm a dark, bro. I got burned so bad, bro. I was peeling. It was nasty. It was not. It was not a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> we had a lot of fun that night. Remember, we uh went back up to the roof. Did a little bit of light running. Oh yeah, no, me, uh, Travis, <laughs> me and Travis were uh, running from. Uh... Who were you running from that night? I don't. I wonder if I should be a fed or not. I don't think. Nah, yeah, we shouldn't nah. say names. No, nah. nah, nah, not names, but ah, uh, Travis is a funny guy. That was a fun night. That was a very fun night. <laughs> no, Travis. Uh, Travis that was crazy that night. Remember, he came out with like three loaves of bread. I don't know how he found that. Like, oh, bro, it's because we were walking. So after we spent the whole day at the Fourth of July, right? We went, uh, like a whole day at the lake. We went, we came back, we showered, and we got ready to go see some fireworks. I don't know why, but I'm so outgrown of fireworks, bro. I really don't give a fuck about them. Yeah, I, I mean, that's fair. I feel like fireworks are fun. Like they're cool. I like popping them personally, like I, me actually going up and lighting them. That's white boy shit. Fireworks are white boy. Yeah, white fireworks are definitely a white boy shit. I'm like I remember one time me and my me and my local white boys, we went to a neighborhood. <laughs> like my allegedly. local white boys. My local whites <laughs> and my local whites. Uh, <laughs> it was like it was like winter time. Like I had to say January, February, and we just had leftover fireworks. And we're like, allegedly, some of us were like, let's let's blow them up in the neighborhood and I, me being the token black guy I was like man we shouldn't do this not because they could get in trouble but I was definitely gonna get in trouble <laughs> if some shit happened and I just remember them lighting them up and the, the like the adrenaline I felt running to the fucking car I was like y'all do this all the time like my heart is pumping out my chest like oh my god because as soon as you let the first fireworks off come the floodlights of, of, of all the the driveways and then everybody's opening their windows hey who did that hey, hey bro that dog <sighs> never again i'm not like <laughs> letting the local whites convince me of nothing nothing hey i mean i when you can do it legally it's a lot of fun just like you know being able to like light it and then run away i don't know you, you, you know, you're just supposed to like leave it on the ground. You're not supposed to like blow your hand up or anything. But shout out JPP. I was gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> no, uh, totally forgot about your birthday party was still this summer too, with the 2000s themed, and yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, our, our, that was another that very was memorable night. That's. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was almost like. That was almost like Ace's birthday party where everybody threw up everywhere. But this time, everybody made it to the toilets. Or so outside. That is great. Shout out, Sean. Shout out, Sean. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> man, Sean I'm was like, out there for like two hours too, bro, just like, throwing up. Like, dog. Like, I wanted to see what like the view looked like from outside. Just seeing like just some Indian guy just yakking, yakking <laughs> for like two, three hours in the middle of the night. Like that shit was so funny, man. Don't forget yeah, Jay Will's birthday party. Jay Will's when we went to Sixth Street, man. The, the Battle of Gettysburg. Battle I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is with Sixth Street, but like once you do it like once or twice, especially in Dirty Six, you just don't want to do it anymore. Like it's like I feel like partying like in your own college town is way funner than See, going to like the big cities. Like I feel like I, once you do it one time, like that's enough. Like let, let me stay in the square. You know what I'm I saying? Think- I think that was part of the reason why I wanted to go to the square the night of Jay Will's birthday, too. I remember you, me, and Marcus were kind of on the, like, uh, we'd rather go to the square. Sixth Street is just kind of crazy, especially getting all of us on the bus. But it worked out, <laughs> and I actually had a really good time. So um, no, I'm, I'm with you, though. The, I'm with you. Speaking about buses, man. The one thing we must never, if they ever bring it up in the in the Senate or the House, make sure they never have a bill that allows bus drivers to put cameras on the back of those party buses. It's going to get real, real nasty for some of us out there. Like, <laughs> it's going to oh get nasty. Oh, my God. Bro. Y'all know who I'm you're talking, talking about. To. Yeah, you're talking about the you're talking about the feds, man. Come on. Yeah, yeah, I'm a fed. <laughs> you were right here. <laughs> I'm right at the line, dog. That like this party bus, it does something Pictures. to people. Like you're like, dog, like we got 30, 30 minutes. Like, the bus is be better than the actual trip to to Sixth Street. I feel like. Ah oh, man, I, I don't know. It is really funny when. Uh... You know, you got people fighting on the bus. Do you remember the? Oh, you weren't there that first time. No, we no, 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 no. Oh, what happened? Oh man, no. That first time we went, we were on our way back, and everyone was drunk as hell on the bus. There were these two girls who started fighting. Like the other girl grabbed her by the throat and was choking her, and Travis was down there like making jokes and laughing at them. <laughs> everyone was drunk as hell, man. But that was the first time I went to Sixth Street, and you hadn't even turned twenty-one yet, so you had no. to sit that one out. And then I, I remember during that, uh, during that trip too. I was like, man, I can't wait till we get to come out here with Ethan. <laughs> and we right, did. Right. It, it, it turned it out got really so good when I started coming out there. <laughs> dog, it got fucking wild. Like, that's shit, let's go this weekend, like, man. Why not? <laughs> chill. I'll be making my trip soon, though. I'm going back. No, what I was saying is like, you gotta be careful with being on those buses and getting in fights, dog. Because yeah, not everyone's built for getting in fights on buses. And the bus is moving too. Like it's moving. <laughs> if you sit, if you sitting down, in my opinion, you sitting down, you in the worst spot because if you sitting down on a bus and a fight breaks out, they just got you cornered between the wall and they fist. Like that's the worst part, easily. And you gotta watch out if you're in the middle too, because like if the bus take a sharp right turn, next thing you know, you're the one in the in the seat, and the one that's standing in the seat is standing up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you gotta be careful with getting fights on a bus. Because when you go out on to like six or stuff like that, people don't think like, hey, what happens if I get into a fight? You know what I'm saying? They're not wearing the proper attire, especially shoes. Shoes is important. Wearing flat, smooth shoes is going to get you fucked up. Don't wear no Converse's in no damn fight. That shit is going to hurt. <laughs> you, 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 you're starting a, you, you, a losing battle. Oh, man. Starting fights, but... uh. How, how do you feel about getting just complete or being completely hammered on the bus before you even get to Sixth Street? I don't, I, I don't we, drink. I don't drink. We ran into a couple of those people uh, at Jay Will's uh, Battle of Gettysburg. Battles, <laughs> Battle of Gettysburg. Damn it! I just got to refer to it as the Battle of Gettysburg, and I don't, I don't our, even call our it listeners Jay Will's birthday. Right? Yeah, yeah. I don't even call it Jay Will's birthday party. I just call it the Battle of Gettysburg. Okay. But... <laughs> <laughs> what title of the episode is that like? Reliving Battle of Gettysburg. Something like that. Like, one day when we get the Patreon, <laughs> we're going to give the full story of what happened on the Battle of Gettysburg. That's going to be... We no, made a sure. little That's... list. We got a little list coming of, what, of, of what's going to happen. And we have photographic evidence, oh, man, this too. Summer. <laughs> oh, yeah. TMZ. TMZ was out. Shout out, Kelly. Shout out to Kelly. <laughs> oh, my God. One thing we do, and I'm really upset that we're missing out on, is that, like, 
I'm missing out on spending the World Cup with you guys. Like, you're trying to convince the other guys to get into soccer during the World Cup. That yeah. That's the one thing we are robbed of this summer is the World Cup with the guys. That's all right. I, I feel like we're still going to have a really good time. We got the NFL season coming up, too. And, you know, we all get together for those games. And when the playoffs come around, too, we'll, uh, we'll find ways to get together for all of those games. There are going to be plenty of opportunities. And like you said, the World Cup, I will be in Dallas if I need to to go watch those games with you. Right, right. Well, Mexico or Argentina is going to be a live last game. I can't <sighs> Honestly, okay, you know what? I think I know what I'm going to do my TikTok about. What? I probably shouldn't talk about this on the podcast, but you guys will see the podcast after I post the TikTok. Um, yeah. I might walk back my Mexico wins that group stage. <laughs> take. That's, a, that's a really bad take. That's a really bad I take. I mean, I just didn't realize how bad they were, bro. <laughs> like, I don't blame you. Normally, they'll get out of the group stage, you. but I don't know. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough yeah. this year. No, I don't, I don't blame you. Speaking about, we said the NFL season coming up, and I think we're getting to the part of the show where we, sports, sports, sports. We get a Ooh. bunch of <laughs> we get a bunch of our sports takes off or just sports opinions. But yeah, can I get one off real quick? Uh, let me, let me just start. Hold on, hold on, hold on. On our uh, Instagram and Twitter uh, today on Tuesday. Oh yeah, yeah, we got responses. All right, let's, let's we got hear responses. It. So let's read some of our responses uh, for our 2022 NFL hot takes. The first one we got was that. Uh, uh, is going to win his second MVP. In my opinion, I don't see him. I don't see him uh, at least starting out the year. I'd be very surprised if he plays the first two games of the season. Not because of injury. I think he should sit out until he get that contract. That's tough. I feel like he's going to play. Um, I don't think he'll sit out those two games, but even if he does, I think he'll, he'd have a pretty good shot of winning the MVP. Um, I don't think so. <sighs> But, I mean, when you just look at how many other quarterbacks and just in his conference alone are going to be competing for that award, you got Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, uh, depending on how the Raiders do, you got Derek Carr, Russell Wilson, just to name the quarterbacks. I mean, yeah, you got you got a lot of tough competition, but I, I believe in Lamar. I think he could definitely do it. I think he has the talent for it. I just see him like, I think he should just just take it off, especially the first two games, and get that bread after coming off that injury. They just have to stay healthy too, and you're right; he has to get his bag. But the big thing is them just staying healthy. I think so. Because they so. were after Lamar Jackson got hurt last year. I think they went zero and six in the games he didn't play. That's crazy. Like, just goes to show how important he is to the team. And if he plays the full game or the full season and puts up another. When did he win it? 2019? 2020, I think. 2020? Okay. Yeah, I mean, if he runs it back with another year like he did that year, I can definitely see him. But the important thing is having a good record in the conference. Yeah. And how he and competes I, I, against those other elite QBs. Yeah, because the Ravens are always hurt. So it's it's like – it's going to be really dependent on their health. Uh, yeah. The next the next hot take we got is from Cam on Twitter. Um, he said that uh, – he thinks Daniel Jones is going to earn a new contract extension this season. Hey, I remember having a conversation with Cam at Battle of Gettysburg about this, and he told me he's very confident that Daniel Jones will get his second or his next contract extension. And uh, Cam, I got to tell you, just like I told you that night, man, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's bro, bro. not going to happen, my friend. <laughs> bro, Daniel Jones is a two pack of ass. Like he Colin might King. be the worst starting QB in the NFL right now. He's up there. He's up there. Like, dog, don't get me wrong. Their roster's a little better than last year, but I just don't see them. Like, I don't see them doing anything, like, good. I don't see them yeah. winning max, like, six games. I see them max six games. Like, they're yeah. not going to be good. Daniel Jones, if I'm there, just trade Daniel Jones, just tank for Bryce Young or, or one of them, or CJ Stroud. You know what I'm saying? I was going to say, you. No one would trade for Daniel Jones, but he's still on his rookie contract. So a team that's desperate for QB play might do it, like maybe a Cleveland Brown, New York Jets, depending on how long Zach Wilson is going to be out. Uh, apparently he had his surgery today as we talk about it, but that's besides the point. I think he's probably still going to miss the first week. Yeah, um, so that that take Cam is poo-poo. Sorry, Cam. <laughs> <laughs> our, ne our next take uh, we got from ooh, which one should we do 
I'm gonna do one from Fern, man. He with the the all or nothing doc coming out uh, about the Lions and everyone being so like just pro Lions recently. This is the most popular the Lions have ever been in my lifetime. Like I I think very much so. He thinks the Lions will go above 500. Fern, even though I would love to see them beat the brakes off the Packers, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. They 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 just don't have talent, bro. Like I love I love. Uh, What's the name of the receiver that came out of uh, Bama? Williams? Yeah, uh, Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams. I thought I was going to say Jalen Williams. Uh, Jamison Williams. I think he's going to be really, really good for them. But he's. Not, I don't think he's going to play that much, especially at the beginning of the, uh, beginning of the season, because I think they're going to be nursing his health. So I'll be really surprised if if he does great. And they're going to need him to do great, because that offense isn't talented. DeAndre Swift is cool. Amon Ross St. Brown is cool, but that's about it. I mean, the thing is, the Lions are slowly building something there. The culture is evident as we are watching Hard Knocks. We can see that those guys love playing for Coach Campbell. Um, He brings a lot of energy and a spark that the city really needed in that team. Um, But you're right. The talent is a little bit too far away for me. I don't think they'll finish above 500 this year. Um, I think they'll probably finish in the four or five win range if they're if we're being very, you know, nice about it. Um, but they're slowly building something, bro. Like you look at how many, if their draft picks hit from this year too, you've got franchise corner pieces in Aiden Hutchinson, Panay Sewell, Jameson Williams. You got DeAndre Swift. And basically all you got to do from there, you got a good tight end in TJ Hawkinson. You can just replace Jared Goff with one of the QBs that you can get from this year's draft class. And Detroit might be set to compete in that division. You've got an aging Aaron Rodgers. Chicago is still <laughs> terrible. Oh, <my> <laughs> the, Vi- the Vikings are like in a transition period, I think. They're figuring things out. <laughs> They've got the best receiver and one of the best receivers in football and uh, might make a case for it that uh, Kirk Cousins isn't the guy. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, uh, no, that's not a. I think the Lions. We'll see. My whole thing is like culture is good and all, but more, we know how teams get, especially cultures, new cultures when you keep losing. So, yeah. if they keep losing, it's all good and well that Dan Campbell is a very inspiring coach. But if you keep losing and you keep losing, who knows how long he's gonna be there? You yeah, know yeah. I mean, you got to win the winnable games, and realistically, like I said, four or five wins is gonna be probably what they're looking at and if they can get to 500 then i would consider that a success and just be like (laughs) it's only up from here really definitely definitely all right we got another one shout shout out shout out front for that one yeah shout out friend our next one Ooh, i'm gonna go with nolan man nolan said that uh george pickers will be the steelers true number one and be the best wide receiver in this draft (sighs) I do yeah. like George Pickens a lot. I like, like how good he's played so far in preseason, even though it'd be one game. I like it that his new nickname is NFL Young Boy, but I, I don't see him beating out Deontay Johnson this year. That's tough, man. Um, I think he could be, beat out Claypool, even though I don't think he's better than Claypool right now. And I'm not a Claypool fan. Like, yeah, I'm not a Claypool fan like that. But I don't, it's going to be really hard just to be Claypool because I feel like that's more in his mold as the X yeah. with, with Claypool. Or just the big body jump ball catch receiver that Claypool is. That's his best chance because I don't see them getting rid of De- Deontay Johnson as I'm soon. Yeah, I'm, something like that. I'm in agreement, bro. Um, I, I don't know if you remember, but I was very high on George Pickens going into the draft. I wanted the Packers to pick him. And even though I'm very happy with the Christian Watson pick, I kind of wish they would have taken George Pickens. I think he's going to be an absolute just monster. Um, I don't think he'll be the number one receiver this year, but he's very quickly. He's He's got the same kind he got of like energy. That he's, he's got, got that, that dog factor, in. right? He's got that dog in him. Yeah. <laughs> they, they showed us the x-rays, man. I got to find that picture so <laughs> we can put it up on the screen. He's got that dog in him. That's just how I feel about George Pickens. I like his attitude. I like the way he plays. He's very aggressive. And, um, yeah, man, I think the Steelers found themselves another gem. So, Nolan, maybe not this year, maybe not the number one receiver on the team this year, but very soon we can see George Pickens making his way up. Yeah, no, that's that's a good take. Uh, let's, let's do some final ones. We'll do two more. 
Um, the first one, the or the next one's gonna come from Jacob, man. Shout out Jacob. Uh, he said that the Saints are gonna win the NFC South and sweep Brady in the regular season again. Ooh. This is the first one. I don't think it's gonna happen. I'm not sold on the. I think their roster is really good. I think their ceiling is like really, really good. They have everything. They have one of the most talented rosters in the league. Wait, this it's, isn't the first one you don't think is gonna happen. You said the other ones aren't gonna happen either. Oh, you're right. I'm a liar. I'm a liar. I'm, <laughs> you I'm you a literally said every other one before that wouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah. no, but I, <laughs> I'm, I'm a sociopath. No, but uh, I guess. It's going to be hard for the Saints because I feel like the Saints always start off so well and they tail off. Like last season, they started with two really, really good wins. The first really, really good win they had is spanking y'all asses in the first game of the season. Yep, I remember that. And and then Jameis <laughs> got hurt and then it just went downhill from there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, and it would hate. I would hate to see the Saints do good. Like I would really hate the Saints to do good. See, I get. Why, why do you I can, say that though? Because fuck Jalen. Because fuck him. That's why. Because fuck him. That's why. <laughs> no, but uh I don't think they sweep Brady again this season. I don't see him. Man, maybe I have been hanging out around Jalen too much. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I know Jacob, but we'll tag Jacob because we're going to make a clip about this too. But I'm with the Saints train this year. I think they'll sweep Brady. They'll win the division. And you know what? (laughs) This is one of those takes I'm okay to be wrong on because then I could just make one of the the new TikTok series and just say, hey, (laughs) these guys put me on. (laughs) Hey, hey, shout out filthy fellas, man. My bad. My bad, man. You got to put one hand in the air and say my bad. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. (laughs) um but yeah the saints man um realistically speaking i think they're a really good team they've got a really good defense like probably the one of the best defenses in football and their wide receiver core is the receiving core is amazing obviously with olave you got mt coming back man and um alvin Kamara. you got a whole team of guys, but I still just don't feel good about the quarterback position either. Like, even if Jameis is healthy all year, I don't think he's going to be the difference between them winning the Super Bowl or not making the playoffs. Like, and, and, and to win that division, you got to be you're going to be be uh, TV twelve, and I don't see them. Yeah, over the whole over, they might be them. They might sweep them. They have a better chance of sweeping them than and they winning do the winning division. the division. Ah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was looking at Tampa's schedule, and it's a lot easier than what the Saints are going to be doing. Um, and but I don't know. That's another. That's another take. I feel like wouldn't be crazy. Is what if Tampa takes a step back? I think they're going to start off the year slow, especially with all, all the O line injuries. But I yeah. really feel like the the NFC is weak. Like. Y'all yeah. got worse by a lot. Even though I think y'all are gonna get better in some areas, like I think y'all are gonna follow what the 49ers do and just try to become a run scheme team, or just a scheme team. You know what I'm saying? And it's and it stop relying on Aaron Rodgers as much. Uh, the Cowboys. I know you hate us. I know you hate us, but we got we got worse this off season. And yeah, I mean you're right. Every every team in the NFC really got worse. While t- all the teams t- t- in the Tampa NFC got, got, got better, better at first. Tampa got got good. Like they stayed consistent, but they just got yeah, hurt. Injuries, retirements, yeah, just a lot of stuff going on over there. So see, that's why I'm a little lower on them. But you can't count Tom Tom Brady out, obviously. Um, yeah. Uh, do we have any more takes or? You Last wanna... one is yours, Mister Gage Sutton. Oh, is that you shit. think uh, Malik, Malik Willis is going to take over the? The number one starting job by the end of the season for the Titans. At some point during the season, Malik Willis will take over as the starting quarterback for the Tennessee Titans. And uh, I don't know if it's going to come from Ryan Tannehill being benched or him being hurt at some point or something, but Malik Willis will be starting by week 18 or 17 or whatever, or before then. Uh, bro, he just don't look ready. Like He got the tools, but that preseason game, he did not look – what do you mean? He was throwing some. He was throwing he some got, dots. He also got. Uh, you hear his coach after the game. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not perfect. He's not perfect. No, that's but... not what he said. Don't try to put it like as he be perfect. His coach was like, "Yeah, he he needs to make throws and stop trying to do too much." So I benched him. You know what I'm saying? To summarize, to summarize, like yeah. I think Malik Willis is is gonna be all right. Do I think he beats out Tannehill this year? No, no. I think I'm predicting a Tannehill revenge year. He's gonna make up for that that Cincinnati game that he threw. See, I I have a bad feeling about the Titans, man. I have a really bad feeling that like shit's gonna hit the fan for them. You got an aging Derrick Henry. There are questions about Ryan Tannehill, and you lose AJ Brown. I just feel like you have a lot of things going against them right now. Um, personally, if you're like three fourths of the way into the season and the Colts have a clear lead, I would just say fuck it and start Malik Willis at that point because you're not playing for anything and might as well just see what you have in him and decide whether you want to draft a quarterback next year, deal Ryan Tannehill if, Matt, if Malik Willis needs another year. I could see I, it but, happening, but I don't think putting him in that early is like that. That that should be the decision. Like you know what I'm saying. Like I don't think that yeah. should be how they decide whether Malik Willis is ready or not because they see him every day in practice, and we're gonna see him play. A bo- Ryan Tannehill is not playing these preseason games until the very end, of the last game. Malik Willis is gonna have three games to show me something because if he looks like poo poo garbage for, for these next three games, like or the next two games. What's the point of putting him in week 14? <laughs> hey, I don't know. They might not have a choice either. Like I said, it, I, I'm just saying a lot of crazy things happen in the NFL. I think Malik Willis will be starting at some point. And again, it could come from injury. I Knock on wood. I hope that doesn't happen to Ryan Tannehill. It could come from literally anything. But Malik Willis will start a game for the Titans this year. I feel you. I feel you. Well, um, that's I've got a personal it. one. You Can got, I drop one more? quick? Yeah, Go one ahead, more, man. Bro. I got to, you know, I, I got to rep the family name, man. And uh, I'm definitely going to draft him on my fantasy team just so I could have a, a you know, a team name with uh, my name on it, too. I'm going with Cortland Sutton with the Denver Broncos, man. Can, can we talk about how he's going to be elite with Russell Wilson now? I think so. I think he's going to be able to replicate. Even though I don't think he's as good as DK is, he can replicate a lot of the stuff that DK can do. And I think he's going to have a really, really good year. Will yeah. the Broncos have a really good year or not? Is it going to be up in the air? Yeah, especially with how tough that division is. But, yeah, we've talked about that division a lot. <laughs> we all know how tough it is. Yeah, yeah. I would I, I would like to see that spread out. Like I, My whole thing is, like, the Raiders, I want to see how good they are. But it's going to be hard to see how good they are in that division. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Do you think we can see all four of those teams make the playoffs? Uh, no. No, not all four of them? No way. One of those, one of those, no. I think one of those teams is going to disappoint and disappoint bad. That's how it is every year. One of those AFC West teams are going to disappoint really, really bad. I don't know which one, though. It could either be... The Chargers. Like if you, ha- if you if had to Justin, bet money, Justin Herbert doesn't make the playoffs again. This. If you had to bet money, this team is going to disappoint. Yeah. Put money on it right now. If you had to, yeah. Oh. I can't go Chiefs because they got, in my opinion, they got the best player in football, and Patrick yeah, Mahomes. And they got a top. Two, they got a top two coach in Andy Reid. Uh, I feel like they, you can't they, do that they, with the Broncos either, bro. Because like, winning we've seen... organization. Like I, I've seen them win before. You know what I'm saying? Even though I think. Wilson probably is gonna end up choking in the playoffs this year. He'll like still get he, there. He'll, he'll still. I, he he's gonna get there. That roster is too talented. Even though I can see their defense taking a step off because uh, Vic Vangio had them playing like monsters, and he's not gonna be there no more. That's fair. Another thing didn't take into consideration, but I don't know, man. There's something about the Raiders that kind of gives me bad vibes too. But they got I better too. That- obviously, adding Devonte Adams, but is it enough? My whole thing is they was better than the Chargers last year without Devontae Adams. Yeah. I know they but get Devontae The Chargers Adams. got a lot better, though. A lot better than what the Raiders did with just my, Devontae the, Adams. I, I mean, they got Chandler Jones, just, too. They got Chandler Jones, too. Oh, I don't the, the Chargers got Khalil Mack, and they got J.C. Jackson. But with the Raiders, they got Chandler Jones. He ain't no slouch, bro. He's he going to be a, a first ballot. I mean... 
If I all right, if I had to pick one right now, if I had to pick an AFC West team to fold, it's gonna be the Chargers. It's in their <sighs> it's in their DNA. It's who they are. It's who they are. <laughs> I hate it, man. I hate it because I really want to see them. I win. do like the Chargers. Like I do like the Chargers. Yeah. But it's but, in their DNA. Yeah, it's either gonna be them or the Raiders. That's that's who kind of I'm deciding. And they're gonna and, hey, and they're gonna be bad. Like they're gonna be one of these teams, whether because injury or not, is gonna be really bad. Like I'm talking, one of those teams doesn't pass six. Uh, one uh, one of those teams isn't gonna pass five wins. No way, that's crazy. I'm telling you, that's a crazy take. I don't think so. I think I think every team in that division will hit eight at least. No. No way. That's crazy, man. There's no way that <laughs> a team finishes with five. You're right, though. It is the NFL. We've seen crazier things happen. It could possibly be uh, one of those teams disappointing us. But uh, I think we're we're pretty much going to wrap it up, man. We've uh, I think we covered a lot. Um, how are we yeah. going to do PSA? We don't have a guest. I don't know, man. We should, we should pick. <laughs> That's weird. It's, it's, it's one of us gets to do PSA this time. You know what, man? I'll let you take it over for this week's episode and All next right, time we do the solo dolo I'll I'll do the next PSA say this man I'll do PSA this week man Ethan's public assert damn I'm already struggling already <laughs> Ethan's public service announcement for this week is man p- push man push like school is starting for a lot of us like and I know this is gonna sound like a weird after school special but dog, ain't ain't nobody gonna care about yourself if, if you don't care about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like, get give a give a fuck about something. Like I know it's cool to be dark and mysterious and not give a fuck about anything and just flow, go with the flow. But it's time to to lock in. I mean, a lot of our friends they're upperclassmen and it's they're coming into the last year uh, of school. So my message is to them, man. I love y'all. Let's lock in. Y'all got a year left to to join the double degree gang. So let's let's lock in. Yes, that's sir. A, get better. Like get better every day, man. I, I think that's a great one, for sure. I think, uh, like you said, words of encouragement. You guys are so close to the end. Let's finish it off. And then for uh, our graduated friend Marcus, the only other member of the uh, two degree great gang, um, let's uh, let, Ethan. Let's just keep working hard at this, man. And uh, hope you guys are enjoying the content. We're really gonna keep trying to put out more and. Uh, if you guys like some of the content more, like want to leave comments, just let us know. And if you guys want to see something we appreciate else it. We that really we want to talk about, yeah. We really mean engage. I speak for both of us. We really want like more guest interaction. We would love talking with y'all. Like, who give us the time? Yeah, y'all the time in y'all's day to talk with us. We do answer a poll on on Instagram or, or or in the comments of the YouTube videos and the Twitter. Please, we love talking to y'all. Like, follow us. We'll talk to you guys all day if we can. Like, we, we, we live for this shit. And soon we're going to do either this week or next week, probably next week when we get it together, we are going to do a fantasy football live stream. So for those who are interested in fantasy football, we're going to have all the guys on a big Zoom call. You're going to see everybody dressed up in, in, in their uniforms, getting ready to start drafting. It's going to be a lot of fun. So please please tune in. If you have suggestions for videos, let us know what we can improve on. We appreciate y'all, man. Yeah. And uh, share this episode with a friend, share the channel with a friend, and uh, make sure you follow us on all of our socials too. Uh, for our recording, it's the young Rottweiler, Ethan Hamilton. Oh, oh, oh. Five foot five of Pure Temptation, The Matrix. You know the guy. And I'm 007 Gage Sutton. Thank y'all for watching, and we will see y'all next week. Peace.